Welcome back to True Wellness. Thanks for spending time with us today. Today we're going to touch on a subject that uh, a lot of people find very interesting in relationship to how we help people restore their health and maintain good health here in the office. And that is how our emotional uh, states and how our emotional life impacts our health. And I know we talk a lot about the primary stressors that people are under, the heavy metals, the chemicals, the viruses, fungus, molds, bacteria, you know, things of an immune challenge uh, nature, scars on the skin, uh, allergies, of course, and poor nutrition. All of these things combine over time uh, to cause a stressor to the system to the point where uh, illness starts to take over. And one of those stressors is the emotional component. And depending on who you're talking to and what references you're looking at, the emotional component can be everything from 60 to 70 percent of someone's uh, uh, physiological issue all the way up to 90 percent. Uh, Dr. Carolyn Leaf wrote a wonderful book called Who Switched Off My Brain? And she literally talks about somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of all illnesses first manifest in our thought life. And when we talk about emotions in regards to what we do here in the office, it really is pretty broad. It's not just about how we feel about things. Because there's feelings, there's emotional responses to situations, there's beliefs, there's uh, perceptions that we have that we hold on to. And all of these things combine to be an emotional uh, stressor to the system depending on what's what's happening for the person. And so uh, one of the important things to understand, one of the first things we really talk about with folks in regards to the emotional component to their uh, symptoms and to their illness is that emotions are not psychological. They have a psychological effect, but they're not based in psychology. They're actually a physiological response that the body has, and this can be traced uh, to a neuropeptide, which is a protein in the system, that's released in the body depending on what's happening or what someone's thinking about. Uh, it also affects our hormones, right? Depending on what we're thinking about and what's happening to us, our hormones change. Cortisol goes up and down. And so all of these things have a physiological response. And what happens is uh, in early on in Chinese medicine, they related different emotional states and responses to different organs. And it appears that these peptides manifest in the organs and travel through the system, travel through the circulatory system, and then finally hit the brain. And the brain goes, okay, this is how I feel about something. As we go through our lives, emotional events pile up, things that are stressful, dramatic, traumatic events that happen to us and the body literally holds on to these things for later reference in case it has to respond again and it starts to build up and becomes a stressor to the immune system there are a lot of great techniques out there uh, that people use in order to release those primary emotional events that seem to be linked to illnesses seem to be linked to pain oftentimes people come in and they have pain but it's unexplained you know, they have knee pain or back pain, but they actually didn't injure their body. And one day they just woke up and they, or they're walking around and they go, suddenly I have knee pain and it comes and it goes. When pain comes and goes in the body, oftentimes that's an indication that, there's, that it's actually linked emotionally in the system. There's a great saying that we have here in the office that we use a lot. And that is anything that's emotionally suppressed, whatever we emotionally suppressed, eventually becomes physically expressed. It's what the body has to do. It's always trying to balance out. It's always trying to maintain homeostasis. And one of those stressors that it's dealing with is an emotional state. And if we continue to suppress how we feel about things or what has happened in our past or what the body feels is happening right now, and we, we learn to suppress those feelings because we were taught early on that we shouldn't show anger right, or boys shouldn't cry, all of those early things that we're taught in regards to how we deal with how we feel over time builds up and suddenly we're 50 and 60 years old, we're 40 years old, and we don't cry. And even when it's appropriate to cry. And oftentimes the body's response in, in relationship to crying and tears is a release of tension in the system. And if you think about it, even when we're sad, there's a tension that builds up to the point where the tears come out. And that's a good physiological release for the body. So when we have emotional events, even if we don't have a conscious memory of them, when they're suppressed in the system, they take up some of our immune system response. They take up some of our biological energy. And uh, it becomes one of the primary stressors. 
And so in releasing those events through kinesiology and kind of tricking the nervous system into rebooting, kind of reprogramming the system so that it no longer responds to a, a, an event that was way in the past that's not supportive to the system now, we find that the person feels like energy comes back to their system, they feel a relief of tension, uh, oftentimes it's kind of a peeling of an onion to get to the point where the body will get to the primary issue. What I've found over time in, in working with folks in this, in this way is that the body releases events dischronologically. And so things may show up at certain ages that really have no real heavy uh, story behind them or emotional event behind them. And yet this is what the body wants to release. And it does it in a way so that what my belief is, is that it does it in a way so that the big events or the things that the body perceives as a big event are not um, kind of opened up before the system can handle it. And so oftentimes uh, as we do this work and we help people with their emotional states, it also incorporates how they think and what they believe. And uh, how they view themselves and how they view their health and what they expect. Oftentimes expectations comes into play. You know, when somebody sits down and says, well, you know, I, I'm 65 years old, I should have knee pain, right? My back should hurt. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. And so as we look at all the primary stressors that we deal with with folks, and they really are the big ones that cause the body to eventually not be able to stay in homeostasis and, and heal itself, because that's ultimately what we're helping the system do. Ultimately, our systems want to heal themselves. They have the ability to heal themselves. And as long as that internal environment is a certain state and our um, metal load and our chemical load from the environment is low and our organs have the ability to detoxify and drain the toxins out and we function appropriately in that regard and we sleep well, we feel like we can burn energy appropriately and we handle the emotional states that we deal with and the emotional events that happen in our lives and remember that stress in that regard uh, doesn't pick good or bad stress is stress so if you're getting married in a couple of weeks it's a fantastic event in your life if you're getting ready to have a baby it's a fantastic event in your life and it's also highly emotional and it's also highly stressful and so sometimes we find that uh, as we go through this work with folks, good things come up, good, good experiences in the life come up, and find that it was actually stressful. And we release those stresses just like we detoxify other things out of the system, and the whole body has the ability to really come back on board and go back online and return to health to really restore to maintain and enhance somebody's well-being, we look at all those stressors. And one of the best ones and one of the most uh, exciting ones really is the emotional component for folks in regards to their health because oftentimes it's immediate relief and immediately results in regards to someone's pain. Oftentimes people come back after doing some of this work and uh, really feel like everybody in their immediate family and friends have shifted a little bit. Everybody's a little different to them. And really what's happened is that the body has released some of these emotional cathexes, some of these emotional programs, and some of these veils of perceptions, right? And the person just feels clear, sees clear. They respond to their loved ones and friends in a different way. And life is less stressful. Ultimately, what it's doing is it's releasing unsupportive old programming in the system that if left unchecked and left unreleased continues to cause a stressor just like you had a pebble in your shoe and at some point the body's going to try and compensate for that and illnesses and pain and fibromyalgia and different things like that really show up because like I said earlier what we need to remember is that anything that is emotionally suppressed eventually becomes physically expressed. Unless we intervene and express that and shift the nervous system in a way that allows the body to feel relief from any of those types of issues and events. So I hope we briefly touched on some of the emotional uh, components to our health and some of the things that show up in regards to people's illnesses with our health. And uh, a workshop's gonna be coming up soon. Uh, 
look at our website, go to www.biologicalhealth.com and um, look for the upcoming workshops. I know that we're doing an allergy workshop very shortly and our emotional workshop should be coming up. And those workshops are both an hour to an hour and a half long. So we're really getting some in-depth information in regards to both of those subjects. So I hope you enjoyed this brief time today and thanks for checking in with True Wellness. We'll see you soon.